G'day. You're in for quite a treat in this video and at least one or two following it because I'm going to be sharing something to do with quadratics and polynomials. Uh, don't go away just yet. You'll discover something quite interesting about them. But I'm going to be sharing something that, to the best of my knowledge, is not taught in any high school, certainly not in Australia and possibly in the world. And uh, I've never seen in any university textbook. Oddly enough, I discovered it in a popular mathematics book when I was 15 years old. The year was 1970. I was living in a little country town in New South Wales, Australia, and visited the local news agency. And oddly enough, among the romance books and penny dreadfuls there, I found a mathematics book. It was written by a man that I've come to admire, and I wish I'd got in touch with him before he died in 2008. A man called Walter Sawyer, W. W. Sawyer, who to this day, I believe, has written the most popular mathematics book ever written, uh, A Mathematician's Delight. It was written, I think, in about 1947. But this particular book he wrote in 1970, and it's called The Search for Pattern. I don't know whether you can obtain it very easily, but I discovered this book, flicking through it intrigued me, I took it home and devoured it, and it opened my eyes to mathematics in a way that no school textbook ever did. And a uh, fabulous writer. I just think it, it's old style, there are a lot of lovely modern mathematics books out and I read many of them. But this one, and uh, others written by Sawyer, let me recommend him to you. Uh, if you want to Google W.W. W. Sawyer, S-A-W-Y-E-R, uh, please let me encourage you to do so. You'll find a web page devoted to him, www.sawyer.org. And uh, what a marvellous man. You'll find quotations that will inspire you. Let me share with you something that he opened my eyes to. And oddly enough, it's 3,000 years old mathematics called the Babylonian Differencing Technique. And what I discovered was this. In analysing a sequence of numbers, for example, uh, let's choose a really simple one. Let's choose the odd numbers. Uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. What he pointed out is that when we have a simple sequence like this, if we actually analyse the gaps between them, they're always consistent. Sorry, I'll just grab another different colour. The gaps here are two. They go up by twos. So what you say, that's really, really simple. Well, yes, it is. This kind of pattern is what we call a linear pattern. Because if you come to graph them, call this the Let's call this the first point, the second point, the third point, or the 0, 1, 2, and you draw it on a graph, you get a straight line, hence linear. And the equations for them tend to be, now if I put 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, so that's the fourth, third, second, first, and zeroth term, if you like, uh, the, the formula would be 2x plus 1 these two numbers give me the two numbers in the formula. And more on that in a future video. What he showed me was that if we had another pattern, I'm going to choose quite an obvious one, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Now I hope you recognise those numbers as perfect squares. If we draw the gaps in, this jumps by 1, this jumps by 3, this jumps by 5, this jumps by 7. Interestingly, they're our odd numbers. So a perfect square is the sum of odd numbers. Uh, more on that in a future video. But if you go to the next line and look at the gaps, they're even. In fact, we've reproduced this pattern 
on the second and third lines here. So when we have squares, or if you like, quadratic equations, and we look at the differences between them, they always have a consistent pattern on the second line down. First line for linear, second line for quadratics. Let's look at cubes. Well, 0 cubed is 0, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and 4 cubed is 64. We could keep going, that might be enough. Let's look at the gaps. 0 to 1 is a gap of 1. 1 to 8 is a gap of 7. 8 to 27 is a gap of 19. And from 27 to 64 is a gap of 37. Let's look at the next differences. From 1 to 7, sorry, what's that? adding there instead of subtracting. From 7 to 19 is 12. From 19 to 37 is a gap of 18. And look at the gaps here. From 6 to 12 is 6. From 12 to 18 is 6. And this pattern would repeat. And these are cubics. Cubic equations. So, just segmenting them. Linear equations have a consistent pattern on the first line of differences. Quadratic equations have a consistent line on the second line. Cubics have a consistent lot of differences on the third line. Cortex or fourth powers on the fourth line and so forth. This is consistent and this every single polynomial subscribes to. So if you had a polynomial like y equals uh, x to the 7 minus 15x to the 5 plus x to the 4 minus 16x plus 17, some horrible thing like that, and you started substituting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and, and got a series of numbers out and then looked at all the differences, on the seventh row down, they would all be the same. How, ama how amazing is that? I'm not going to explain in this video how to uh, derive the equations. That's for a future video. But I do want you to realise this consistent pattern that underlies the structure of all polynomials. And interestingly, this is how the ancient Babylonians analysed their number sequences. So it's called the Babylonian Differencing Technique. It's a fabulous technique, and even without understanding algebra, you can use it to solve important problems. So what I propose to do in the remaining minutes of this video is to solve a particular problem with you with no algebra whatsoever and just using this design. In the next video you'll see how to actually create the formula. But let's have a look at a problem. I'll clear the board and we'll have a look at it now. Now, imagine this particular problem. We have a surface, let's say a, sheet, a large sheet of paper, and we're asking this question. If we use lines to divide the sheet of paper up into regions, straight lines, how many regions can we get? Well, if we have no lines, we've got one region on the page, the whole sheet. If we use one line, we have, it divides the sheet into two. Let's actually draw them down here. There we go. We have two regions. If we use a second line, we now have four regions. So two lines, four regions. So far, the pattern looks really simple. Uh, let's continue. When we put a third line, we're going to try to create as many regions as possible. 
So rather than put it through here, through the point of intersection, so that we would end up with six regions, we're actually going to put it a little off centre. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regions. Now the question is, how many regions would I get if I used, let's say, 10 lines? Well, to do that practically would be, I, I encourage you to try it. It's actually quite difficult. Uh, by the time you've got 10 lines on a sheet, uh, you have a great clutter of lines in towards the centre and very, very tiny regions and triangles. But let's look at the pattern, sorry, let's look at the pattern using the differencing technique. What's the gap here? One. 2 to 4, 2, 4 to 7, 3. This is not difficult. This is how the Babylonians would have done it. What's the gap between 1 and 2? 1, 2 and 3, 1. Because I've got consistent numbers on the second line down, I know that when I create the formula, it's going to be a quadratic. Uh, watch the next video to learn how to do it. But it, it is true that the formula to describe this whole thing is a quadratic equation of the kind that you would deal with uh, when you're, let's say, 14 or 15, years 9 or 10 at school. Now, without using algebra, let's try and solve the problem. If I went to the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, you realise I do these ad hoc. I might stop at 8 and not go to 10 because it would just go off the edge of the board. Um, I apologise for that, so I'm changing plan midstream. But you can continue it. I'm going to continue this pattern here. I'm going to put 1s under these numbers, lined up. And if these are growing by 1, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, 8, and then 9, and so forth. Changing black back to my black. If this is the gap between these two numbers, 7 plus 4 is 11. So 4 lines must give me 11 regions. Let's try that. Here's a fourth line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. How about that? If we add 5 to 11, we get 16. So if I put a fifth line down, let's try to do that. Let's say through there. I'll create another one, an 11th. So there's 11, 12th, 13th. 14th, 15th, 16th, and if I kept going, 16 plus 6 is 22, 22 plus 7, 29, 29 plus 8, 37, 37 plus 9, and so forth. Uh, oh, we could perhaps just squeeze it in, 9 and 10. I don't know whether that quite makes it on the board for you there, but... Sorry, the 10 would be in between those. I'm squeezing things in a bit here. 37 plus 9 would be 46. And 46 plus 10 would be 56. So this predicts that if you had a large enough sheet and were very diligent and drew 10 lines on the, ball, on the paper to maximise the number of regions, you would in fact get 56 regions. If you wish to try that and confirm it, uh, by all means do it. I spent many hours in my childhood and actually even as an adult exploring things like this and uh, learning great mathematics along the way. What a wonderful technique. It's one of the first mathematical techniques ever devised. We've, we know from, when I say we, archaeologists and historians know from analysing 
clay tablets from uh, Mesopotamia that the Babylonians used this method to analyze a lot of uh, things from nature and uh, mathematical patterns of all kinds. Just marvellous. So there it is, we've used no algebra, but we've solved quite a difficult problem. Please watch my next video to learn how to actually construct the equations because that is something I wish school students, able school, school students learned. And let me encourage you to go searching for W.W. Sawyer uh, for his website and his books. What a fabulous, wonderful piece of work. This, by the way, is the original. It's a little bit tattered. Uh, I read through it a number of times and it still has all my original markings in that I put there when I was 15. Uh, this opened my eyes to so much good mathematics. Uh, if you can possibly track it down, I can strongly recommend it to you and I'd love you to contact me or to leave a message below this video to let me know what you think. But uh, I just think, I like the way he writes, I like the way he thinks. Um, inspiring stuff. There it is, the Babylonian differencing technique, W.W. Sawyer, the search for pattern, which really is what mathematics is all about. And I thank you very much for watching.